So I've got the system assembled. Uh, for now I'm using a power supply to drive the pump and the fan because it's easier to make sure they just run on 12 volts and keep going in the background regardless of whether or not the Peltier is going. I've got the Peltier bodged on with some tape and I've got my power supplies to drive them. Now I've done some testing and this cheap TEC from eBay isn't what it claims to be. Now it claims to be a get another one out of the packet. Came in a pack of three. Here's the packet with the other one in it. Oh, man, be back in a sec. It claims to be a TEC 1-12715, which is supposed to be a 15 amp Peltier, which at 15 amps will have about 17 volts across it and be pumping 150 watts of heat. Now I've run a test of this, which you've seen, and we were getting nothing even close to that performance. I was pumping 7 amps through it and seeing 25 volts across this thing. So, it's a much smaller Peltier than it's supposed to be. You can see, to be honest, I should have seen it from these wires. Look how tiny these things are. There's just nothing there. That is never going to take 15 amps of current. So, I did a bit of research, and I went on the internet, and I found from a reputable source, that would be Farnell, a proper Peltier device. I went through Farnell and I looked for a Peltier device with equivalent performance to the TEC, put that in quotes, TEC 112715, and found one from a company called Etdyne. These guys do make proper Peltier devices, and this one is rated for 12 amps. And we'll pump 165 watts of heat at that current and have 20 volts across it. And look at these wires. Much, much thicker copper. There's a lot more current carrying capacity there. And that gives me some confidence that this thing actually can take the current. I'm not going to run it at 12 amps, I'm going to run it at 8 amps. Because it's easier on the power supplies at that uh, Current we should see 17 volts, so I'm going to configure this one, which is a boost supply to go up to 24 volts from 12, so it'll take 12 volts from my battery here, kick out 24 volts in the intermediate, and then I'm going to set this guy for 8 amps and limit at 24 volts, or 20 volts probably, just to be sure. They're both switch mode and they're both pretty efficient, they're both up in the high 90s, so they're, they're going to get warm but they won't get ridiculously warm. We'll um, put them on a heat sink anyway we'll just rest them on top of the fan for the first test uh, even at 95 percent efficiency we're talking 150 watts so they're still going to be dissipating enough heat that they'll need some active cooling so let me just get this wired up i'm going to shorten these cables and i've got here some much thicker much thicker cable just to be on the safe side because any voltage once we're constant current the current will stay the same the voltage will rise so the cable resistance doesn't really matter when you're driving constant current but any extra volts that are dissipated in the cables is just more work this power supply has to do and more work this power supply has to do so it represents an inefficiency which we could live without so i'll get this wired up and i'll bring you back well here it is and it seems to work we've got power supplies there putting eight amps through the peltier device We've got the Peltier device mounted up. I've strain relieved the cables. We've got half a litre of water in there, five litres of water in there. And as you can see, there's a little bit of frost starting to form on the outside of the heat sink, even through the tape, which isn't good because it means that this copper is below zero, which it shouldn't be. The water's at 16 degrees C inside and there's frost forming on the heatsink which means my surface area contact calculations were miles off but let's see what's inside you can see it is in contact with the water inside but probably not good enough I'll probably have to fill it all the way to the top to get the performance I actually want but if we have a look at what's going on the temperature's coming down pretty quick. Not quick enough, but pretty quick. It started at 
and it's now 15.5, it's been going two minutes, so extrapolate from there, it's going to take a little while, but uh, bring you back. So we're down to 11 degrees, it's been 11 minutes, and it's dropped by 9 degrees since I started my test. Not a great result to be honest, I'd hope for it to be a lot faster than that, and I think I know why it's not working as quickly as it should. First of all, you can see there's a lot of frost on this heat sink. that means that it's way too cold, which means the Peltier is not working anything like as efficiently as it should be. Secondly, inside this chamber, this, these pieces of metal here, where they're below the water line, they're not even cold. They're the same temperature as the water. Up here they're cold, but down here, not so much. They're too long, the container's too deep, the thermal transfer down that pipe just isn't good enough to keep the liquid at the same temperature as the heat sink, which is vital for the efficient operation of this product. So I think I'm going to have to come up with a bit of a rethink on how I do this. I'm probably going to have to make this smaller so that it can go lower in the container and shorten these pipes. Maybe also fill the container right the way to the top. It's at 5.7 degrees now. Ooh, it's just starting to drop. 5.69. I'll give this a little shake, it should drop quite a bit. He says. There you go, it's starting to drop again. Unfortunately, the flow rate, the temperature distribution in there is not great, so you have to give it a little shake to make it all equal out. But uh, there we go, 5.56, 5.5. It's been going for 22, 23 minutes, and it's dropped 15 degrees C which is pretty close to our target in terms of the temperature drop not so good in terms of how long it took it took three times longer than it was supposed to though I'm pretty sure I now know why so maybe time for a slight rethink but anyway let's taste the water that it's cooled and see how it comes how it came out well according to the thermometer the final temperature was 4.6 degrees C certainly feels cold, it's forming condensation. Let's taste it. Yep, yeah, it's nice and cold. 4.7 degrees would seem cold enough. It's a little bit metallic, it's not too bad. There's a little bit of copper coming through, but only a bit. Mmm, it's nice and cold. So that's worked. One thing I was quite interested in, once I turned the power off, the ice melted almost immediately on the top, which means there probably was a fair amount of heat flow from the water up into the copper. Some of that will have been that this is quite a warm room as well. Let's see how the cooling water did. Okay, coming up fairly quick. Take a minute to stabilise, but... That cooling water started at 20 degrees C, same temperature as the water that we cooled, and you can see it's now over 30. That's probably going to settle out about 31 or 2, maybe 33. Yeah, settling at about 32. So, it's gone up by 12 degrees to bring this down by 15 degrees and there's 10 times as much water in there as there was in here so roughly 10% efficient not great oh well time for a rethink